Today let's talk about some safety with mixers. This mixer right now uses a 220 volt, which is not your normal plug. It's actually a four prong plug. Now if you look here, the one of the plugs has a little notch on it. That notch specifically goes into the plug and when you twist it, it locks the plug into place. Okay, over here, as we take the plug, we notice that there is a notch right here in the plug. That slides in, oh, over here, slides in, and then we twist the plug. By doing that, it locks it into place so that way the plug doesn't come out. On this piece of machinery, you will notice there are many different attachments. This is your gear shift and clutch. This is your start and stop. This is your timer to set to, to show the calibration of how long something mixes. And this one has a hydraulic lift, which will raise and lower the bowl. On this machine, it does not have a clutch. It just has the start and stop and it does not have a hydraulic lift, it has a crank. So let's go ahead and show you how it works. So we have the machine plugged in. We're going to go ahead and turn the machine on. I wanna to notice to make sure that I always have my machine on first speed, always to start. No matter what I'm doing, I wanna make sure for safety reasons I have my machine on speed one. The next thing I'm going to do, as you notice down here, my mixing bowl, has this little tab here. This tab fits in this section here. Also over here, these leaves fit on top of these pins over here. So my goal is, is to elevate this bowl up in and make sure that I have it secure in the back and on the side. Then I take my plates and I'm going to snugly tighten these. So this way my bowl does not want to jump or hop off the machine. Now, let's talk about attachments. We have multiple attachments that you can use for the machine. Over here, we have a dough hook. We have a paddle. And then we also have a whip. These attachments can be used depending upon what item that you are producing. If I'm doing a dough, I wanna use obviously a dough hook. If I'm doing a batter and I need to cream something, I would use my paddle. And if I'm trying to aerate or bring volume into possibly eggs and sugar, I would then use my whip. Okay, let's talk about how to put on the attachment. The attachment works very simply. If you notice how I have the notch here, and then I have a locking mechanism here. So the attachment goes up underneath. You wanna make sure that you keep your hands away from here, because I have had students actually pinch their hand on this pin. So grabbing down below, slide the attachment onto the machine, turn it, and let it rest on the machine. That's how you put an attachment on. All three of the attachments go on the exact same way. All right, once I have my attachment on, I'm going to show you how the hydraulic lifts. By pushing upward, it will raise my bowl up. We let this rise all the way up, and the machine will tell us, because it will vibrate and tell you that it's as high as it can go. Don't get scared by that attachment. That's just telling you that it will not go any further than that. Now, we want to make sure that we're on first speed. This machine has a clutch. So to activate the machine, you want to pull down and you will, it will run. To change speeds, you activate the clutch to stop, switch speeds, and as you can see, it's now on second speed. This is what third speed looks like. And then this is fourth speed. Always remember, with these larger machines, you are dealing with a very powerful motor. So you never want to stick your hand while the machine is working. Also, make sure no one is in here while you possibly could be on this side and you are scraping out. I always recommend that you stop the machine and go in and scrape. 
You can also lower the machine and go in and scrape, but never have anybody around here while your hands are in here. On this machine, as you will notice, this one does not have a clutch. So in order to change speeds, it is recommended that you stop the machine, change speeds, and start. Now this one, as you notice, you will see that this is a manual bull lift. Now the difference from that machine to this machine is these are the locking mechanisms on this one. Same principle though, the bowls and the attachments that fit on this machine also fit on this machine. Again, the tab goes in here and the leaves on the ends go on here and then you secure the bowl by locking it down. Always remember that you want to start the machine on first speed. If you don't, you have a tendency to make a mess. Also, looking at this plug, you're looking at 220 volts. 220 volts is, can be deadly. So we wanna make sure that when we clean our machine, we unplug it with dry hands and we wipe and secure the entire area, washing it down and sanitizing it after the end of every use. Let's talk about the safety of a 30 quart mixer. This mixer uses a 220 volt. As you can see here, it has a little notch. That notch goes into the plug. And as it goes in, it slides in and you twist it so it locks the plug into place. This 30 quart bowl, these are 60 quarts, this one is 30 quart. Notice this has a break in the band that wraps around the bowl. This break is always in the front when you go to put on the bowl. This band fits underneath this lip and these little locks here will lock your bowl on place. So, we always seem to have students having problems with this. So we're gonna lower this bowl, and we're gonna slide it up underneath, and we're gonna push it down. As you notice, it's underneath, back here, underneath the lip, and then we're gonna take the locking pins and lock the bowl down on this side, as well as on the other side. So by locking it down, the bowl is secure. Let's talk about attachments. The attachments for the 30 quart are right above the machine, okay? There's also safety posters right above the mixers. If you look, we have a 30 quart whip, a 30 quart paddle, and behind that is a 30 quart dough hook. The 30 quarts are always hung and washed here to go with the machine. The 60 quarts are over next to the 60 quart machines. So let's talk about some of the mechanics here. To raise and lower the bowl, it has an actuating arm. This arm locks into place. You can hear the clicking sound, which locks it into place. To put on an attachment, the attachments go on like all the other machines. If you notice, it has a pin, a spot for the pin to go in. There's a pin back here, okay? and then it goes in and then locks into place. So we put the attachment on, lift it up, turn it, and it hangs on there. And then we go ahead and raise the bowl. Before we turn the machine on, we always wanna make sure that we start on first speed. Always start the machine on first speed. So it also has a timer. The timer you can set, say the machine, the recipe calls for an eight minute mix. You can actually set the timer for eight minutes and start the machine and it will mix then for that eight minutes. To stop, you just press stop. To change speeds, you press stop. So to change speeds, we're gonna go ahead and turn it on second speed, press start. Notice that if you're having problems with the machine to start, it's because this needs to be turned to the hold button and then you'll be able to start it again okay and then the last speed that's on this machine is three so we're going to go ahead and you can see that's third speed stop when you stop the machine i always turn it back to first speed i go ahead and i lower my bowl i go ahead and i take off my attachment i unlock my bowl and then i remove the item 
from and then take it to my workstation. So to do a 20 quart, the button goes in the back, slide your machine on, we push it down, lock it into place, and again, remember the attachments. We got a whip, we've got our paddle, and we also have a dough hook. Remember, don't confuse these attachments with our 12 quart attachments. Remember, the long shaft is for the small bowl. All right, same way, we go on, we slide the attachment on, it lifts up, turns, and sets into place. You plug it in the same way, plug in, dry hands, plug the machine in, make sure you're on first speed, you raise your bowl, product is in, and we start. Mm -hmm. To change speeds, turn the machine off, let it stop, and then we can change speeds. And then we start again. Let's talk about the new 20 quart Hobart mixer. This one, as you can see, has a lot of safety features on it. One in particular is the cage and a lot of different dials here, as you notice on the machine. So we're gonna make sure that we always start on first, first speed. Okay, so let's talk about the bowl. The bowl has a different attachment here that actually hooks on and it allows you to pivot the bowl in and out of the machine. When you push the bowl forward, it locks and there's a magnet in the back. You can lift the bowl and swing it out. All right, that's a nice feature. The next thing is, is as you notice, all the attachments have these spring pins in there. These spring pins actually go in and up underneath. You pull the pin and it slides up and it locks into place. This pin is what locks it into place. So it's a little bit different than the other two. Then you raise the bowl manually up and it locks into place. The cage needs to be spun around and lock and the magnet touches this actuator which allows it to start and then we go ahead and press the start button. When you press the start button, it will start automatically. What's nice about this is you can turn the machine without having to worry about it. And it also does have a timer on it that you can turn it and will count down how many minutes. Once it hits, the timer stops, the machine will stop as well, as you can see, and it will be. So to change gears, same principle again, press start, and then to stop. Remember, if your machine doesn't work, it's probably because the cage has not been completely closed. To open it, remove it, open the cage, all right? We unhook the attachment, we lower our bowl, slide this over, we grab it by the handles, and we lift it off. And that's how you go ahead and remove it for the new mixers. The smallest mixer of all is the five quart. As you can see, it has the same attachments as the other mixers. The mixing bowl does have a handle on it. It also has a button and it has two ears that actually hang on the machine. And the attachments are the same, they're just in a smaller version. So we wanna make sure that to put the bowl on, I always go in and I put the ears on first and then I grab it from the back and lock it into place. The attachments are put on the same way. They slide up. You look for the pin, slide up, turn, and lock the bowl into place. Always remember, whenever you're going to go ahead and plug the machine in, your hands are dry, plug it into the wall, and then you always wanna make sure to elevate your bowl. I'll turn this around. You lift the bowl up and lock it into place. And then on this side are your speed attachments. Always remember, you wanna start on first speed, and then when you want to scrape, you lower your bowl, scrape your bowl, and then raise it back up, and then you may wanna adjust the speed accordingly. But that's pretty much the same way. To clean, all the mixers are cleaned the same way. You wanna make sure you unplug the machine first, use hot soapy water, sanitizer, and depending upon the usage, you may wanna cover them if they're not being used in, in um, 
You may want to cover them if they're not being used right away um, or for summer or storage over the summer.